The next brush stroke I'm going to create is a zip brush stroke. It will have a zip pull and a zip end. So it's going to be a three tile brush stroke. The zip pull at the beginning or the start tile, the side tile with just the zip teeth and the end tile with the zip end and a few of the zip teeth. So the zip pull that I'm going to use is this zip pull. I got this zip pull off style site and I've just taken all of the gradient out of it for the moment and I'm going to create a zip brush using that zip pull. I'm going to copy that across, delete the highlight on it because I don't need that for this exercise. I'm going to rotate it so that it's horizontal, holding shift. That's very important. Whenever you're creating any of your brushes, you must rotate things. Everything must be created on the horizontal. As you remember, when we created the brush stroke with the corner in it, how Adobe Illustrator reads things is always from left to right. So the start always needs to face from left to right. So this is my zip pull. I need to first create my side tile and then I will create the beginning tile and the end tile. As I've said to you before, I like to keep my zips within a 2mm boundary. So I'm going to create a rectangle that is 2mm by 2mm. I'll put a yellow fill in it and I'm going to remove the stroke. Let's zoom in so we can have a better look at this. Because I'm creating a brush stroke that has a tint and shade in it, what I'm going to do is put a grey fill in that and I'm going to leave the brush stroke the outside black. I also have made it so that the, uh, the lines on the zip pull are 0.25. So let's start and create our zip teeth. I will first of all align the zip pull with the rectangle. and I'm going to make a rounded rectangle. What I'm going to do is just click onto my artboard and make the width of that 0.45 and the height 1.2. I'm going to eye drop my zip pull and the next thing I'm going to do is align the stroke inside the, the line. So as you can see at the moment the stroke is either side so it says here align stroke to center and the stroke width is either side of that. Align stroke to the inside you can see that's where the stroke is and it brings everything inside. That's exactly what we want to happen. I'm going to select that rectangle, rounded rectangle select my boundary box and I'd like to align that rectangle to the left side of the boundary box but I don't want the boundary box to move. So I've selected both of those as you can see. By clicking with my selection tool once again on the boundary box it comes up with a very strong line around it. What I'm going to do now is align it to the left and align to the top. As you know, we created that 40.45 millimeters. There it is. I need to create, make my keyboard increments the same. So, Control K or Command K, and I'm going to make that 0.45 tab, and that's okay. And using my alt key and my keyboard arrows as I always do. I tap once 
to the right, take my finger off the Alt key and tap again, hold SHIFT, Command G or Control G to group those or right click and group and copy once more and this time hold SHIFT and drag those down. So I'm happy with the way that that's looking. I'm going to select both of those teeth and group them. And I'm going to select the boundary box, click again onto the boundary box because as you know we want to keep it still in line with the zip pull. Horizontal align and now I want to make my boundary box match the edge of that zip pull. So can you say when I start dragging it in from the boundary box handle, as soon as it hits the zip pull, it highlights it. In this way I know that my boundary box is exactly matched with the edge of the zip tooth. So let's view outline and have a look. So there you can see it. They're both in line with each other. Back to preview. Now we're ready to go on with our zip pull. I'm going to copy those teeth across. Alt and send them to the back. So basically that's all that I need showing of my zip teeth. I can have them a little bit longer. if I want, but it's not really necessary. It's always best to keep the tiles as short as possible. So we don't really need anything more here. That's just a waste. So we can see those zips running through there. And what we also need is an end tile. So I'm going to just copy that boundary box over my zip pull, arrange send to back, take it until it's in line with the last tooth and now I'm just going to draw a rectangle to denote the end of that zip. and I drop that. Remember, let's just zoom up. So we can see how when we're using our smart guides it gives us a good guide when you've hit. So you see how it snaps to the edge? And that's our zip end. So we've got our three boxes available, our three boundary boxes. What I am going to do is just make the boundary box a little bit wider over there. So if I come to transform I'm going to make it 2.5. And I'm happy with that. Let's make all those boundary box boxes transparent. And now all I'm doing is grouping all of these. So I've selected each one and Command or Control G. So there they are grouped. Now that you've finished those three tiles, what we'll do is drag the start tile and the end tile into the swatches panel. And 
Unfortunately, in CS6, it's a little hard to rename the tile without it doing all sorts of things to it. Once I've found out how we can do this, I'll show you. But in the meantime, what I'd like you to do is just be aware that this is New Pattern Swatch 10 and New Pattern Swatch 11. So let's go ahead and create that zip, that zip brush. We'll select the center panel or the center tile, go to Brushes, New Brush, New Pattern Brush, OK. So there we have our original side tile in there. Let's go to the Start Tile and we'll use New Pattern Swatch 10, which is our zip pull. The End Tile will use New Pattern Swatch 11. Tints and Shades and we're OK. Let's go. So what we want is to put a colour into our stroke and draw a line. We'll select our new zip brush and there we have it. So the key points to remember when you've created a brush that has a start and a finished tile in it or any brush that actually has more than one more than the original side tile in it, you need to think of the continuity between the tiles. So in this case what we're looking at is the zip pull and the middle tile and the zip end. The key point here is that all of the all of the images are exactly centered and in line with each other within the boundary box. So we can see that everything we have here lines up with each other. We can also see that from the zip end it finishes in an up tooth which is a continuation from the down tooth on the side tile. The same over here. The zip pull finishes in a down tooth which is a continuation of the repeat from the side tile. So these are key points to remember when you're creating any brush stroke that has more than the side tile. It has to sit in the center and it has to continue from tile to tile. So from zip pull to side tile, from side tile to zip end. And that's it.